Hey YouTube, greetings. Paul Phillips here with Pantech Photography and Gear Reviews. Welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at the uh, new YN622N uh, TTL radio triggers for Nikon. I know these have been much anticipated, much awaited, so I've already done one video, which is a first impression uh, video on these triggers. And I've had these triggers for about a week and a half now, so I'm going to share my thoughts and what I found on the triggers uh, so far so that you can go out and make an informed decision. So let's get right to it. And uh, I'm going to start with a simple um, sort of information about the youngnewelstore.com. Um, the first trigger that I received, I bought it from the youngnewelstore.com, thinking mistakenly that the youngnewelstore.com was an authorized Young Newell retailer. They are not. Uh, since of purchasing the, these units, I found out from Young Newell headquarters, and apparently they put an email out this or some information on their website, that the youngnewellstore.com is not an authorized reseller of Young Newell products. Now, what that's going to hold for me in the future, I'm not really sure, but I'm not panicked about it. Um, but just sort of putting that out there for you. If you're looking for a Chinese reseller website, my recommendation would be thephotogadget.com. That's where I got these other two units. And, you know, Grace Zhang, she's worked with me. She speaks English. She'll email you in English if you have questions. That's the place to go. And they're an authorized reseller. So that's the first thing I found about these triggers. Just a little heads up there. Uh, second thing is, in my first video, I commented about the build quality. Uh, I said the build quality was, you know, first impressions better than 603s, and I stand by that. I like to look at these things. They're solid units, um, you know, PC sync, hot shoe on here. Um, all the buttons uh, seem to work. The second issue that I, I ran across with these triggers, a fairly straightforward one, is that when you go to power them up, um, you know, a five-year-old can put batteries in these things. All three units didn't power up the first time I put batteries in them. And so being a techie, right, I tend to fiddle around with them. And so, I mean, all I did was I, I was fiddling around. I put the second battery in like so. I pushed it down so that the nipple on the positive or the positive contact here was touching the side of the contact. And lo and behold, the lights came on. So after that, I just took the battery out. Uh, I took a little Kleenex, wiped the contact off. So I'm, I'm suspecting maybe Young Newell's put some dielectric grease on there that might have interfered with the contact. Uh, somebody who's not technical like me, they might get this. It doesn't power up, and you know they're just going to send the thing back. So it's a small thing, but just be aware of it. You know, put your battery in. If the lights don't come on right away, just you know rotate the battery, maybe wipe the contact, and you're good to go. And since then, like since last week, every time I've gone to use the units. I turn them on and off and they power up no problem. You know, your channel light will come on, your group light, and then your standby light comes on. So you know they're powered up and they're ready to go. So this is standby mode here. This little red indicator light just tells you that the triggers are, are ready to go. Uh, pop them onto your camera. Very straightforward. And they're transceivers. So these are TTL transceivers, like the 603s, which 603s are manual, these are TTL. But the transceiver means that these will transmit and receive. And as soon as you press your shutter button down halfway, that's what puts this into transmit mode. So when you press this halfway, this transmits, and these two guys will receive uh, straightforward stuff. Now, the, the third thing I want to bring to your attention is that since last week playing with all three triggers here, my results with them have been very inconsistent uh, to the point where I'm actually going to send these units back. I've been talking to Young Newell and please understand I'm not bashing Young Newell. I mean I, I, I like their products, the 603s. I love them. I use them all the time but these triggers I just can't seem to get consistent results and I've played around and tried a, a number of different things with them and you know I'll just pop up the the regular flash here my cameras in TTL it's a D200 I got two SB600 speed lights and all of the testing and you know the things I'm saying to you today I've actually tested them with a friend of mine he had a D300 and we got pretty much the same results so you know like if I fire the camera now so my flash is working uh, you may not be able to see this but I've got a decent well lit exposure here no issues that way so um, so there you go. That's the first three things that I've encountered with these units. Now, let me just check my list here. Uh, another thing that I couldn't get to work last week was the pass-through operation. So like the Pixel Kings, uh, these triggers, 
you're, you should be able to put them on top of your um, 622 and they should work in pass-through mode. And so I'm just going to turn everything off because the, I, I believe the proper way to set these up is that you power them on from top to bottom. So my SB600 is on. I've just turned on my uh, transmitter here. I just turned on the camera and let's see if they fire. Yeah. Uh, so basically the, the exposure here is it's underexposed. It's actually not bad for no flash, but you know, the speed light didn't fire. So that's the kind of results that I've gotten uh, in the pass through mode. So <clears throat> just pop this back onto the trigger. Now, the, the, the next thing that I want to bring to your attention is that the whole reason for buying a set of TTL triggers is so, you know, especially for amateurs, you can just take a picture, set it, forget it, the camera sends out a pulse, and the TTL functionality actually sets the exposure properly for you. Uh, so you don't have to worry about manual mode and going making your adjustments, that kind of thing. Um, it should be effortless. That's the first thing. The second thing I think is that if, if you're going to use TTL triggers, you want to be able to do ratios. You want to be able to set this speed light, which might be your key light, to full power or, or just work on normal TTL. But you might want to reduce the power of this one if you're using it as a hair light. And so the way to do that on uh, this system, it took me a while to figure it out. Now I've got it. I could do it in my sleep probably. But um, I think some of you that are new to these triggers, you're going to have the same, you know, it's not a five minute thing to just read the instruction manuals because the translation from Chinese to English is it's a real struggle with these triggers. So I'm just sort of warning you of that now. Okay, so you want to do ratios. We got group A here. We have group B. Both triggers are set to channel one. Here's what you got to do. <clears throat> so you notice that as soon as I half press the shutter release, uh, everything lights up. So there's good communication between here and here, and the you know no issues that way. Press the shutter release halfway down. That puts the, the transceiver into transmitter mode. Hold down your test button here, which has a minus sign beside it, and the channel selector button has a plus sign. So what I want to do is I'm going to reduce the power by one third stop on a Group A speed light. Okay, hold your your shutter release button down halfway, and then press the test button until the Group A button comes on, and then let it off. And then the Group A button will, or the Group A indicator light will flash one time, and that indicates a one third stop reduction on this. Uh, channel on this group A speed light and even from day one I was able to get that functionality working no worries no problem at all what I did was I put both speed lights five feet in front of the wall and one-third stop adjustment is very fine you're not going to see a big difference if you knock it down one-third and then one-third and one-third probably at the second or third time you'll see uh, less power here than what you would see on this side and from day one that functionality has, has worked properly uh, for me, it's such a fine adjustment that it wouldn't be useful. So I thought, well, okay, I, I read the manual, I read the instructions, all that kind of stuff, and the triggers will actually do full stop adjustment, <clears throat> which is almost the same procedure, except you hold the shutter button down halfway, uh, and then hold the test button down, and essentially what you do is you hold the test button down until group A comes on, group B, group C, and then until the channel indicator light comes on. And as soon as it comes on, you release the test button and it'll flash three times. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, do you think I could get it to flash three times last week? I'm telling you, I could not. I actually tried to shoot this video yesterday morning and right when I got to the part where I am here, you know, finally for the first time it flashed three times. So. I don't know what's up with that. Again, you know, just to, to tell you, I've been in contact with Young Nuo. They're, uh, they've are they been interested in my results. I've sent them some images. So I'm, I'm suspecting that maybe I have a set of early production units and the firmware needs to be updated. I really don't know. I'm not into bashing companies for products or something like that. I'm simply sharing the results I've got. Um, I hope it's valuable information for you. If you can go to a store when you purchase these and try them on your camera and make sure they do what you want them to do, I mean, that's the ideal 
uh, thing to do. But when you're purchasing from, you know, a retailer that's far away or even in, in the U.S. or something like that, it's just, you don't always have that uh, opportunity. So hopefully this information will help you a little bit. So just to sort of recap, I have been able to get the one-third ratio adjustment to work. I finally got the full one-stop adjustment to work. Um, but, you know, my results are, they're always inconsistent. Like even now, everything's set up. If I go to take a, a picture, <clears throat> you won't be able to see it, but the screen is almost completely black here. So. Yeah, one uh, information or one uh, piece of advice Young Nuo gave me was do an EV adjustment. Uh, so, okay, fine. Well, look at this. It's already set at plus 1.3. And the image is totally underexposed. And that is exactly the kind of results that I've been getting from these triggers uh, since I've got them. Um, if I adjust these just for the heck of it, I'll put it at plus 2. EV adjustment plus 2. Let's try again. And lo and behold, the screen is still black. And, you know, if I take the triggers off, and let's just do a test here. You know, sure, sure enough, I get a nice bright image. Um, everything's working fine. And even if I use my SB600 speed light on top here, I should be able to get a properly exposed, yeah. You know, beautiful, well-lit image, no issues whatsoever. So, just pop this back on the trigger here. Just to make sure I haven't missed anything. Um, yeah, so the last two things that I can, I can talk about, and that is <clears throat> another function that works really well, or has worked well from day one, is the AF Assist. As long as your camera's in the S mode, um, you might not be able to see this, but the, you get the red indicator lights. The F assist mode seems to work quite well. And also, uh, if you zoom your lens, the, the speed lights will zoom as well. So those functions seem to work well. It's just a general inconsistency in the exposure of the images, which is the key to the whole enchilada here. So um, that's basically what I found over a week and a half of testing. Uh, like I said, I've been in contact with the Photo Gadget and with Young Newell, and believe me, I was, uh, I'm really hoping that this is just a minor firmware situation. I can get three more good units and I can come back and do another review and give them a glowing review. But uh, at the moment, my results are uh, are what they are. I mean, it, it is what it is. I hope that helps you. Uh, if you know, because I've been getting a lot of emails from people that have seen my uh, YN560 version three Speedlight review, and you know, they've asking all kinds of wonderful questions. I, I send answers back as quick as I can. A lot of people asking about, hey, when are you going to do a, uh, an operational review of the 622 ends? Well, this is that review, and you know. Again, hopefully uh, things improve. I get, I get a, a, pair or a set of units that work a little better than this. I'll come back and do another review. I'll give them a glowing review if I can get some good results out of them. But right now, that's what I found so far. So that's it for this one. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and like us, and we'll see you soon. Bye for now.